Africa's mammals of the sea are sleek, elegant, smart, powerful, and still hide many secrets. Most southern African sea mammals never leave the sea. They are the cetaceans, the dolphins and whales. Latin and Greek gave them their name. It means gigantic sea creature or sea monster, and they are enormous. A southern right whale cow and calf, lozenge-shaped like all sea mammals to cut easily through water. These goliaths can be 17 meters long and weigh 65 tons, about 800 times more than an average man. Unlike most other whales and dolphins, they have no dorsal fin, and their lower jaw bends upwards in a U-shape. Whales have individual patterns of callosities, pale growths of barnacles, parasitic worms, and lice living on its skin. The largest group of such freeloaders forms the bonnet on the head. A whale is huge, its eyes relatively small, but still roughly tennis ball size. Whales breathe air through a pair of blowholes on top of their head, first to break the surface. Immediately it goes under, they shut tight, otherwise its lungs would flood. It breathes out in a V-shaped blast that looks like water. It isn't. It's the same as our breath condensing in a cloud on a cold day. Whales use pectoral or side fins as rudders to maneuver and steer. They often roll slowly with their pectoral fins out of water, especially when they're socializing. Some people mistake southern rights for killer whales if they see one with black and white markings and large black fins. The great fluke is every whale's calling card, an instant identikit. Flukes can be very expressive, this is called sailing. No one yet really knows why they do it. One unproved theory says sailing is a form of locomotion. Bottlenose dolphins have slightly hooked dorsal fins. Without knowing, you might think they were shark's fins, but you won't see sharks behaving like this. And there's no mistaking this apparently smiling face. It once belonged to a land mammal that turned forelimbs into flippers, shrank external ears to virtual pinpricks, put down blubber for warmth, and turned nostrils into blowholes on top of its head. But whereas a southern right has two blowholes, a dolphin just has one. Bottlenose dolphins are champion surfers, leaping and diving and riding the breakers. It looks like pure pleasure. And these are the other African sea mammals, seals. 
Most seals only really come to land for long periods in the breeding season, but Cape fur seals spend a considerable amount of time on land all year round. Color helps separate the boys from the girls. Females are olive brown, males dark brown, much larger too, just under two meters long and weighing around 100 kilos. Pups start out black and are as playful as most youngsters. Out of water, seals are usually basking or scratching out those irritating sea lice. A seal's thick fur is coated with waterproofing oils. Under it lies an insulating layer of blubber. The face is rather doggy, with a prominent snout and a stiff-whiskered military moustache, whose true role nobody knows. One theory says they are vibration detectors. Ears are short, hairless and pointy. Teeth are strong and also pointed, the better to grab slippery fish. Flippers are to some degree land legs, but are really made for water. They're also good for scratching with. Two hind legs lie close together with a very short tail in between. Seals are the only African sea mammals that inhabit two worlds. whale was playing in the waves of Africa's shore, many fishermen believed it to be a supernatural being. Great and powerful, huge and strong, the whale presided over all the fish of the sea, over the seals and the dolphins. All trembled at the sight of it. Not only could the great whale see what went on in the ocean depths, but it watched over the surface of the earth too. It was supremely wise. And when its mournful cries mounted to the heavens, the people knew it was indeed supernatural. It was, so they thought, an immortal sent to earth to watch over them. And if only they could understand its enigmatic song, they thought, its great wisdom would be theirs. Because sea mammals live in a world that's alien to us, much of what they do and why is still a mystery. Dolphins can mate at any time of the year, and their mating behavior looks playful and boisterous. Several different males home in on the same female and try and single her out, but she picks her mate. 
males are a little bigger than females, though most of the time they're difficult to distinguish. Their antics seem to have caught the attention of two feathered spectators. Dolphins may play for hours in courtship, but mating itself is brief. If the female becomes pregnant, she will have a single calf after nearly a year. Twins are very rare. They've set the copycats off. However, oyster catcher mating is a very fleeting affair. June through to November is when southern right whales visit South Africa's seas, where they caught and mate quite close to shore. The sexes look so alike that, like dolphins, the only way of telling them apart is size. However, a female is bigger than a male. She may have a long line of suitors and has the luxury of picking and choosing, taking her time to find the right one. She may take hours to pick the right southern right. Then they mate, her on the surface, him underneath. If she rolls belly up like this, it's her way of saying, no. His penis, not surprisingly, is colossal. She may take several mates, then it's up to their sperm to race it out. In species where males don't actively compete, their sperm often do. If whale mating is a real marathon, so is the female's pregnancy. It will be a full year before she has her calf. Southern rights migrate each year from icy Antarctica. Females give birth off the coast of southern Africa, not in the frigid seas of the Antarctic. Calves are born with little blubber and need warmer waters to help them survive. A small percentage are born white, baby Moby Dicks. They are not albinos, but nor will they darken much with age. They'll become brindled or mottled grey. Humpback whales come through here twice a year, heading north to their breeding grounds, then south again with new young calves. When a humpback cow has her calf, she gets help from a midwife whale. For a short while after its birth, the midwife often supports the new calf, holding it near the surface so it can breathe. Whales produce super-rich milk, about 40% fat. The weight gain of calves is phenomenal. So is that of baby seals. Cape fur seals give birth on the southern African mainland and on offshore islands. The main rookeries or breeding grounds are on the west coast, as far up as Cape Cross in Namibia. Seal pups are born towards the end of November. They grow fast and are soon lively and demanding. All mother wants is a nice quiet nap without a 13 kilo weight squashing her. Some just can't take a hint.
As pups get older and start wandering, it's not unusual for them to discover mother is somewhere else in the rookery. This one has lost mum in a sea of seal faces. She won't be easy to find because rookeries are large, densely packed and raucous. Each animal has an individual scent. The pup sniffs a rock. Maybe she's been here. Or maybe he'll see her from on top. There she is, sensibly staying put, but calling. Did he hear? Apparently, yes. But there are an awful lot of bodies in the way. Found her and her welcome teats. She can flop back and relax. Father a dominant bull, also known as a beach master, is virtually a hands-off parent. But he tolerates his playful pups, and this one seems to be keeping an eye on their progress. One of the male pups might turn out a heavyweight like him to lord it over the beach. For that, they might need some hints about combat tactics, though their actions are largely instinctive. Could this be a nod and a wink of parental approval? If he were a human father, it surely would be. It's strange to think that though land animals originated in the sea, some eventually returned. 50 million years ago, that's what a group of ungulates did. They were the forefathers of the cetaceans. Around about that time, certain primitive even-toed ungulates like camels and giraffe slowly became adapted to life in the water. As did certain early antelope. As they took to their new watery home, so their bodies had to adjust. This animal, the hippo, is probably the closest living land relative of the cetaceans. Maybe it's what their ancestors looked like. It's easy to picture an early coastal land mammal scavenging dead fish, then hunting the living, and finally spending so much time in the water that it lost the ability to live on land, where there were more predators and more competition for food. And that's probably how today's first whales evolved. The first whales recognizable as such appeared about 40 million years ago. Although large, those first creatures were smaller than most of today's whales. Over time, they developed a more and more streamlined shape. One group eventually produced modern dolphins.
the most dramatic whale action seen above water is the breach. Propelled by its mighty tail and massive back muscles, the whale very nearly lifts clean out of the water. Whales may do this to try and shed irritating skin lice. A whale's shape is designed for cutting smoothly through water. Their pectoral fins are stabilizers with bones similar to a human arm and hand. And they can flip a colossus right over. The fluke is made of coarse fibrous tissue, flexible and very powerful. It's what drives the animal through the water and down into the deep. Though seals are designed to move fluidly through water, they get around on land surprisingly well. They have various gaits, a sideways shuffle, a clamber on front flippers. And a forwards shuffle, their fastest gait. And if one can do it, so can the whole lot. Going downhill looks a touch clumsy, but seals scrabble and stumble down and manage fine. When put into sea, they sometimes just let wave and current take them on a roller coaster ride out on the frothing surf. No gold medals for style, maybe, but they have had years more practice than we humans at diving. And which one of us would like this sharp edge diving board? A bed of mussels doesn't phase a seal. Of course, this is the seal's real element, the water. Seals are extremely agile swimmers. They're so supple, they look rubbery. Front flippers paddle them forward. Back flippers steer and guide, like a boat's rudder. They're as skilled at leaping from the sea as leaping into it. They really do look as if they revel in their natural element. It more than makes up for being ungainly on land. Seals, like whales and dolphins, must surface for air. Cape fur seals can stay under for 10 minutes before they need to breathe again. The human free dive record is eight minutes the average person would be lucky to manage one. Sometimes, seals just hold those ever mobile flippers quite still up in the air. This is to regulate body temperature. They often seem to make it a bit of a social occasion. They beat us at diving, and what about synchronized swimming? Or is it water aerobics?
Sometimes seals and dolphins swim together, usually when hunting. They speed through the water doing what's called porpoising, swimming along the surface, leaping clear regularly. It's a way of hotting up the pace. Bottlenose dolphins are natural surf champs. They can ride a wave better than the best. Just a flick of a fin and they change direction with an accuracy boat designers might envy. Whether trying to outleap each other or just swim lazily, a dolphin's tail is its propeller, its pectoral fins are its rudders and the hydrofoils to smooth the ride and stop it rolling or make it roll. Drag is a problem for large-bodied swimmers. It slows them down. A dolphin can circumvent the problem because it has slightly oily skin to reduce friction. If a dolphin must surface to breathe, how does it sleep? Its brain switches off half at a time in snatches, eight minutes at most. At least that's the theory, no one really knows. Some dolphins have been seen lying on the seabed, apparently asleep. Dolphins often leap right out of the water, and they can really kick the accelerator, racing at 35 kilometers an hour, equivalent to a large ocean catamaran. When it's speeding, a dolphin's skin develops minute ridges that cut turbulence and drag, because water slips more easily over them. Everything about these remarkable aquatic mammals is designed to make getting about easier. The oceans are a vast, salty reservoir stocked with fish and plankton on which sea mammals depend. A whale sometimes goes tail up to keep its head down while it eats. Southern rights dine on krill by the billion, two tons on a good day. Struts of something called baleen form a sieve in the whale's mouth. The whale gulps in mouthfuls of water and krill. The water escapes through the baleen sieve and the trapped krill slide into its gargantuan stomach, just like Jonah in the Bible. Over a century ago, baleen was used in women's corsets and this partly explains the Southern Rite's name. It was the right whale to hunt. When they make their six monthly visits to South Africa, these whales go on a long diet. They only eat here from time to time. Most of their food lives in Antarctica. Seals eat fish, or if it's around, something very acceptable, octopus. But an octopus can throw up a smoke screen. A mouthful of smelly ink was not what the seal had in mind. So now it's hide and seek, and the odds favor the meal, which can disguise itself as coral, or almost anything on the reef. So, octopus is off today. 
What else is there for a seal to sink its teeth into? A flounder, one of the flatfishes we humans relish. Strangely, seals don't seem to, and so another one gets away. At last, something top of the favorites. A stingray. No sooner seen than snatched from behind and tossed in the air like a pancake to be beaten and flayed on the surface. The seal quickly attracts interest. This rather brutal looking treatment breaks the stingray up into bite-sized pieces, inevitably creating pickings for gulls. The seal had better hurry up and get swallowing. Dolphins often hunt in packs. This group is running rings round a shoal of panicked sardines. They round them up and drive them to the surface, where they can't escape and are much easier to catch. Fish-eating birds seize their chance. Soon there's a feeding frenzy. It may last only minutes, but while it does, the water churns with a turmoil of birds, fish, and different dolphins. Southern rights divide their time between two homes, icy Antarctica and the gentler climates of the southern coasts of Africa, Australia and South America. The nutrient-rich Southern Ocean is the whale's gigantic larder. It's a long way from their cold Antarctic summer home to their winter quarters. Those that come to Africa mostly gather along the wild and beautiful Cape coastline. Here they have their babies and mate in seas that are considerably warmer than further south. Females come close inshore to give birth in the sheltered waters of shallow bays. And because the females are there, the males come to find them. It's a great place for general socializing. Choosing such bays makes lots of sense. Not only are they warmer, they're also safer for baby whales.
As spring starts to warm the Cape, the whales leave to skirt the snows and ice of the coldest place on the planet. These birds inhabit the fringes of one of the hottest, the Namib Desert. This is the skeleton coast, one of the cruelest on Earth. It's a coastline, though, that supports a wealth of marine life. Cold currents sweep up from the Southern Ocean, bringing its nutrients to feed many. The occasional scavenging mammal, and large colonies of birds and seals. This colony is one of six scattered around Southern Africa. It's huge, a staggering million animals. The great quantities of fish offshore may account for it. Imagine losing one of your family here. The offshore waters are cold, so even though air temperatures may be high, seals need their thick layer of blubber and the sun's warming rays. After a chilly dip, it must be good to soak up some Namibian sun. Heads bob everywhere, like a popular beach. Only the keenest human would play in such cold surf, in a thick wetsuit. A seal has its own, two centimeters of buoyant blubber. There are Cape gannets near the seals' living quarters. Gulls, too. All that offshore life is good chick food, and it keeps everyone replete. Cape gannets breed each year in the same place. Their largest colony is in South Africa's Lambert's Bay, a scene of intense courtship and rivalry between literally hundreds of thousands of birds in the breeding season. Gannet colonies rival the seals for noise and reek of dead fish and droppings. But the bird itself is the picture of elegance and grace. Seals are the only sea mammals that come to land, but they're most at home down with the fish and the other sea creatures. Though a skilled and graceful swimmer, a turtle cannot compete with a dolphin. The greatest numbers of bottlenose dolphins live off the south and east coast. Larger bottlenosed prefer the deeper waters further offshore, off the west coast. The shore huggers hardly ever go deeper than 30 meters and always gravitate back to the shoreline as if pulled by a giant magnet. Hitching a ride on a breaking wave is a quick route to the shore. If dolphins can experience pleasure, they must love riding the surf.
To us humans, the underwater world is silent, but in reality, it's alive with sound. It takes a special underwater microphone to hear the language of the sea. Dolphins echolocate. Their sonar is a series of high-pitched clicks which bounce off solid objects and prey, invisible in murky water. The clicks are produced in air passages in the skull. The fatty tissue of the forehead narrows them into a high-energy sound beam. Clicks can stun or even kill small prey, a real 007 weapon. Each dolphin also has its own distinct whistle. These social animals keep up an almost constant whistle-click conversation, whether together or apart. We humans do a lot of talking with our hands. A whale can use its tail to speak to others. Thrash it on the water and out goes a loud message no nearby whale could possibly miss. It's called lobtailing and is believed to send either aggressive or amorous messages. Spy hopping, peering above the water, is probably just a way of seeing what's going on out there. Breaching is exuberant body language, as if the whale were letting off steam. We humans don't really know the meaning of breaching, only whales do. A seal colony is a riotous spot, even noisier than a popular beach. Howls, grunts, bleats and roars fill the air in what seems a non-stop, discordant symphony. In the breeding season, the noise is increased by a chorus of pups bleating like lambs. Dominant males are quick to defend their cliff or beach from intruders, not just with a physical display, but with grunts and roars. Females grunt too, sometimes aggressively, sometimes in play. <laughs> Two young males getting into the swing of things. They back up their action with the statutory aggressive grunts. Even in this heap of bodies, seals have their own patch, which they guard verbally and physically. But the subtleties of their language are as mysterious to us as those of the whales and the dolphins.
the shark, enemy not just of fish, but of the smaller sea mammals. Nightmarish teeth can make short work of a young whale, or a dolphin, or seal. At over six meters, a large great white easily outstrips them. But this enemy is worse, killing more dolphins than a great white. In parts of the Far East, dolphins are rounded up and killed for the restaurant trade, and it is not done humanely. Those that don't die from stab wounds drown in their own blood. It is a cruel slaughter, an ugly death for sensitive, intelligent animals that feel pain just like us. Animals famous for saving human lives. By contrast, this enemy inflicts only minimal damage. On Namibia's coast, vulnerable seal pups or sick or dying adults may be picked off by black-backed jackals. It's a harsh world here where anything edible quickly vanishes into hungry stomachs. Seal pups need constant care from their mothers to keep them safe. But there'll be nothing this one's mother can do as a noose tightens round its neck. Strands of line or net like this are called death necklaces. This pup's mother will only be able to offer reassurance. Intelligence, beauty, grace. The attributes of Africa's sea mammals, those ancient animals that left the land to return to the sea all those millions of years ago. Even today, their life in a world alien to us hides many secrets. What they do, where they go, how they truly live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 